Pastor Wolfmuller here. A couple of years ago, I wrote this book, uh, Has American Christianity Failed? And I asked if anybody's studying it, send me the questions uh, for your Bible class and uh, that, that, or your book study or whatever it is, and we'll try to answer them. So if you have questions, please send them in. Now, this question comes from Christopher. They're, they just started the book, and the, they're at the beginning when I talk about nose, theological nose blindness. And, and here comes the question. Focusing on the debate between other Christians and those kind of things, I believe is missing the plot, someone says in the Bible study, because the greater problem is someone who doesn't know Christ at all. So nose blindness comes from worrying about the is it a salvation issue or not, worrying about that to the point of losing the plot and not being an effective witness to a non-believer at all. In other words, why are we reading and discussing and studying American Christianity's, other churches and denominations, failures? Why not just focus on being an effective witness so that we can reach unbelievers? This is a really, I think, a fantastic question, and I want to make three points um, in response to this. First of all, uh, there is a general attitude of having distaste in the argument between the different churches. And then there's a lot of reasons for this, and, and it comes from a lot of places. In fact, it's one of the arguments used against the church. If the Bible's true, why are there so many different denominations? Why are there so many different Christians and this sort of thing? But uh, so, so people say, well, let's not argue about the doctrine or the teaching. Let's just focus on loving one another and reaching out. But if you think about it, all of the, well, let's say this, Almost all of the books of the Bible were written because there was false doctrine in the church. I mean, that's why Paul wrote 1 Corinthians, because there was people who uh, weren't believing in the resurrection, who were getting drunk at the Lord's Supper and didn't believe that it was the body and the blood. They were, people were saying, I'm of Paul and I'm of Cephas and I'm of Christ. And so Paul wrote the letter to correct the false doctrine in the church. Or think about 1 and 2 Thessalonians. The churches had, there had believed false doctrine about the second coming of Jesus. Or Galatians, where Paul is just raging because the people had started to think that they were righteous by their own works. In fact, we see this in the Gospels, the Prophets, even the Psalms, some of the books of Moses and the history books, that false doctrine had gotten into the church and the Lord sent his teachers to correct that false doctrine. So point one is that while it might be distasteful to look at the dangers of different doctrines, we're taught to do it by the scriptures. Jesus says, beware of false teachers. They come to you dressed like, they're, they're wolves dressed like sheep wolves in sheep's clothing, which means that false doctrine is going to come not only from outside the church, but also from inside the church. Paul, when he preaches to the, I forgot about this when I was thinking about it, but do you remember Paul's sermon to the guys about to become pastors in Miletus? He doesn't want to go to Ephesus. He meets him in Miletus. And he says, when I, when I depart, wolves will come and uh, bringing false doctrine from outside and from inside. So that false doctrine also arises inside of the church. So the, the scriptures uh, are concerned with false doctrine and false teaching. The second thing is that while false doctrine is not, does not immediately destroy faith and salvation, it is destroying salvation. In other words, it's possible for someone to be a Christian and have a false doctrine of, of baptism or false doctrine of election, a false doctrine of something like this. So you can have saving faith and hold the false doctrine at the same time, but that doesn't mean that false doctrine isn't dangerous to salvation. It is, false doctrine is always attacking the salvation that comes to us in Christ because God's word, his forgiveness comes in the word. So when the word is being eroded, so is our salvation. I think the picture that I like to use on this is like cancer. So it, it, you can get cancer and you, it doesn't mean you're dead. You can have life and you can have cancer at the same time. But eventually that cancer is attacking your life and it will eventually overcome it. So false doctrine, you can have saving faith and false doctrine at the same time, but that false doctrine is attacking your saving faith. And eventually it'll overcome it or, or the Lord rescues you uh, from it or gives you death or, what, or, or whatever. And so, so, you say, so you imagine someone said, well, you can have cancer and be alive at the same time, so we shouldn't worry about the people with cancer. No, we, we want to worry about it. St. Paul says to Timothy, give heed to the doctrine, to the reading of the doctrine. For in so doing, you not only save yourself, but also your hearers. So that doctrine is salvation. That's 1 Timothy chapter 4. Luther says it like this. It's a nice Luther quote. Luther says, Every false doctrine strikes at Christ. Now think about that. 
so that every false doctrine has as its goal to take away some of the glory of Jesus or to take away some of the comfort that we have as sinners. So, um, so that's the second point, is that even though false doctrine doesn't destroy saving faith, it is destroying saving It's what it's precisely attacking. The reason why we have a concern with doctrine is because we have a concern with salvation. Point three, concern with, with true and false doctrine is not exclusive to concern for those who don't know Christ at all. In other words, it's not an either-or proposition, but a both-and. In fact, the way that I see it is that there's, um, there's different battlefields that we're fighting as Christians. There's like different battlefronts uh, that we're engaging in, and, and they kind of cross over each other, something like this. So that, let's say, here, for example, would be the Orthodox Christian Church, like there. Now, here would be all the other Christians that are there, so that... There's differences between, for example, the Lutherans and the, the Roman Catholics and the Baptists and the Presbyterians. Um, and, and so we're fight Now, they're Christians. They have the gift of baptism. They believe in Jesus, and yet they don't have the... So we're, we're fighting against them here. We're trying to bring them over here. This is where the battle is. Now, all of the, you have the baptized, and you, then you have the unbeliever. Maybe you have people who believe in God but they don't believe in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit or whatever. Now there's a, a battle for the Bible that's happening here. So we, we're fighting here against these guys. When we're fighting here, we're fighting with them. They're on the same team. And then maybe there's people who, who don't believe in God at all. There's the atheists or the whatever or the Hindus and stuff like this. Well, all the people who believe in God are fighting there with the people who don't believe in God. So that sometimes we're fighting against each other and sometimes we're fighting with each other. There's even, so for example, just to take a topic like, and this is big in the news, but to take the topic of abortion, uh, there's people who are atheists and yet they're pro-life. There's pro-life. And when, that, when we're fighting against that topic, we're, everyone who's with us and we're fighting against everyone who's, who's not with us and so forth. So, so there's various different battles that we're fighting, different arguments that we're having, different discussions and things like this. And it's true that the church wants to engage with those who aren't in the church and bring them in. The Lutheran church engages with the other Christian church. We want to bring them in. All the people who believe in God want to talk about, or people who believe in right and wrong are talking about people who don't believe in right and wrong, we want to bring them in. So there's, a, there's different places and levels and battlegrounds that we're fighting. So you say, well, why are, we, why are we fighting? The question is, why are we fighting this battle when this is the bigger battle? Well, they're all very big battles, and we fight where the Lord has put us. We fight, we're, we're all fighting all of these things and, and engaging in various different ways. So I hope that question is helpful for you. I'm so glad you guys are studying the book. If you guys, if you're watching the video and you haven't had this book, you can pick it up from Amazon or, or CPH or something like this um, and, uh, and read it and let me know what you think about it. Thanks. Send some more questions. Talk to you soon.